Hey guys and welcome back to The Bins. I asked you on Tuesday whether or not you would be interested in learning more about my various pitcher plants and it seemed like a lot of you were interested. So today we're going to be talking about summer Saracenia care. Now in this bin I have three different types so we're going to take a closer look and I'll tell you more about them. All in all I think that they are absolutely rewarding plants to keep that are extremely useful for summer mosquito control. So let's get started. So as you guys know, I overwintered one of my pitcher plants and the one that's in frame is the one I'm talking about. Now this is one that I purchased last year at my um, local garden center and it had three varieties, two of which are over, two of which survived overwintering. Here we have Saracenia citicenia, or the parrot pitcher plant. And as you can see, it's just starting to develop its pitchers. Now I gave it a winter dormancy period by putting it in a very cold windowsill and cutting back most of the growth. The other one that is in there is this guy and it's just starting to come back and that one will get a nice wavy leaf appearance that's very dark red with some green veining and that's called the Saracenia purpurea. Um, this one originally had a trumpet style in there as well, but it doesn't. Now while we're talking about the parrot type, we'll look at this one as well, because this is a nice mature plant that I purchased this spring. Now there are about, I think, eight known specific species of North American pitcher plant, all of which are beautiful and relatively easy to grow. Most of them are found all along the southeastern coastal plain of North America with some species even extending up into Canada. Now, most of them come from wetlands that have sandy or peaty type soils. So very, very low nutrient content. And this is important. Now, the sad part of the story with these guys and why I think they're so important to work with is that their habitats are being critically destroyed through putting in housing development, through putting in housing developments, um, shopping centers as well as from wood production and one of the things that used to really preserve these guys natural range was natural fires that would clear the underbrush and forest in order to allow them to have open areas to spread that's not happening either they come from a relatively warm temperate climate now in the winter in the wild a lot of these species do encounter hard frosts and occasional freezes um, where I live, which is zone, I think I'm 6A, um, I have to protect them from the prolonged hard freezes we have here. In an ideal world, I would put them in a garage where they were covered so they would get nice and cold and go dormant, but not freeze solid. Now, what's interesting about these guys, as I mentioned, um, is that they are insect predators. They're carnivorous plants. And this particular species, these ones that are shaped like this are especially fascinating to me because they have this little tiny opening and the color and a nectar that they give off attracts bugs to go in there. And then once the bugs are in, there's these sort of transparent areas on the plant that allow sun to get through that makes the, the bug climb further down. And if the, the bug tries to turn around and get back out, there's actually needle-like hairs inside the pitcher that will impale it making it fall to the bottom where um, digestive enzymes and acids will, will give the plant the source of its nutrients. Now, if you remember, I said that these guys come from pretty much substrates that have no nutritional quality, and they've adapted in order to process these bugs to get the nutrition that they need, not only to grow and produce pitchers, but also to flower in the spring and, and germinate and send off seeds. Now, these guys, here are the trumpet style pitchers, which is this one, are called Saracenia rubra, and they're different. They have this more open appearance to their, to their pitcher, and the bugs get onto the lip of that and then fall down into the pitcher, where they essentially drown and are digested. All in all, I think all of these are super interesting and you certainly don't have to keep them in a tub type environment like this. A lot of these are really good windowsill growers as well, meaning you could keep them in a dish of water 
in your windowsill in the house at least for the summer months. Now again, they do require a dormancy period in order for them to continue to thrive. They need that period of rest where the leaves decompose and they recharge and they come back in the spring, generally starting with the flower. Now the other thing with these guys is that, that you could easily do is set up a big pot, a ceramic pot, on your deck, patio, yard, whatever, and just keep it super moist using a peat mix substrate and just watering it really heavily. They'll thrive like that and they could probably overwinter like that in a wide range of climates. There are some that are more suitable to colder climates than others. All of these are mildly like subtropical, so, which is why I have to overwinter them carefully. Now this fall, when I break down the bins, I'll show you guys what I do to prepare them for winter. But for now, I'm just really enjoying their mosquito control in my bins. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.